When you guys clicked on the video today, you may have noticed a little bit of clickbait in a title and a thumbnail. Now, usually I take a very strong stand against clickbait. I don't think it's the right thing to do. I draw a very fine line between what is clickbait and what is engaging content, but for today's video, I think that line is very much blurred since stock market today had a very tremendous day and uh, any amount of clickbait may just be justified. Today, we broke through the 3000 level, which is a very symbolic level to surge past. We didn't see any sort of resistance whatsoever, and to many people, including myself, this is a very, very surprising move. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. My name is Tony, and this is the seventh episode of me taking a look at the S&P 500 index. Today, we'll be taking a look at what happened to the market, how the market reacted, and where we go from here. So as you guys can see today, we rallied very spectacularly. Yesterday we commemorated Memorial Day, and so we took a day off from day trading, but the uh, global futures still continued trading, and we rallied yesterday, and we continue to rally today. We surged right past the 3000 level, which really didn't fight back whatsoever. We sort of just broke through it in a single 4-hour candlestick, and now we're sitting around 3010 right after getting rejected off 3020. And in my opinion, this is extremely, extremely bizarre. The news was that we're approaching a vaccine at a faster rate than previously expected, and the banks seem to be a lot more healthy than uh, what some people thought them to be, but we were still massively overbought before the rally, and I'm not sure if that news was is enough to justify this move higher, but we continue to go higher nonetheless. In my previous video, I said it was very likely we see some sort of a pullback from where we were on Friday. I think we we're sitting at around the 29.5 level. We were right around here, I believe, but we continue to just move higher and higher without any sort of pullback whatsoever, and now we reach new highs since March. This is very, very surprising in my opinion. It's like from we're only down about 10% from where we were pre-coronavirus at the very top. So where we go from here is kind of hard to say at this point. I think it's hard to continue being short, especially if you're short this entire time. I started shorting on Friday. I didn't go all in with my account, but I did short a moderate position, seeing that I was, I did believe that we, I did believe that we were most likely uh, going to go lower and the upside was very limited. I said the $3,000 range was very strong resistance and it turns out that it wasn't at all. It sort of just um, didn't act as resistance whatsoever. Now, in my opinion, the next line of resistance is going to be around the 302 level. Since we've seen this level being tested before twice during uh, 2009 during the uh, China trade war incident. But again, the stock market just seems very, very unrelenting. We could move down from here. I think we will. But the downside does appear to be very limited. The fundamentals, I said in the, my last video, um, did support a move higher. And by fundamentals, I didn't mean that the economy was good or that stocks had a very good balance sheet or an income statement or that their earnings uh, were very good. I meant fundamentals as in the Federal Reserve is doing everything it can to simply push the stocks as high as possible. It is Donald Trump's election to lose this time around as many people are saying and so he wants the interest rates low and the stock market high. And the Federal Reserve is, they're not listening to Donald Trump word for word but they're certainly helping the stock market quite a bit. You know and you can say they're not helping Donald Trump at all, they're helping the American people but Again, the stock market at the moment is simply outpacing the economy. I had a friend recently, well, a friend of a friend one can say, she got evicted from her apartment because she couldn't pay the rent after losing her job, and as a result, she moved back in with her parents. I think her story is not unique to a lot of Americans and people around the world globally. You know, she was an American consumer, but people like her being unable to afford rent, you know, I, I don't see why the S&P, you know, continues to rally as though... Uh, somehow the economy's going back to normal as quickly as by the end of this year. Now you can say the S&P 500 is a very forward-looking um, indicator. Stock markets, you know, they sort of predict what's going on in the future. Information is very crucial. But even so, I'd say this is a little way too quick to recover. The Federal Reserve is adding more money in, and I guess I feel as though the economy is very much disconnected from the stock market. You know, poor people still don't have their jobs, and the uh, big boys on Wall Street are celebrating a full recovery. But, you know, I know a lot of people that are in very tough times, and, you know, you look at them, and you look at their story, and you look at the stock market, and you start to wonder what the hell's going on. 
So, you know, that's sort of where I believe we stand. Now, if you take a look at some more technical indicators, the Fib retracement, for instance, um, yeah, we sliced clean through a 61.8, and next stop seems to be 78.6. This did act as previous resistance over here, so it wouldn't be surprising if we see it again in the future. I don't think we'll immediately see it, but we could very well pull back here and eventually touch it in the future. This seems to be our next level resistance. 3020 seems to be our resistance at the moment, and on the downside, it looks a lot more limited. If you take a look at the up channel I just drew, 2900 may be some sort of a covering opportunity. I'm currently still short, so I'm trying to get out as fast as I can. I already suffered substantial losses, so, you know, I'm trying to close losses. Honestly, at 29, I'd be uh, in profit, but uh, I think over leverage just a little bit. I'm trying to get out as fast as I can. Uh, before the stock market might move higher, but I think we'll take a break for now. And if we look at the uh, RSI, on the 4-hour we actually did break right through the uh, 70 level, and we are now back in the purple zone, which is you know, the more safe range to be in, but you can see still very much overbought in the grand scheme of things when you look at the channel of between 70 and 30. I don't know if it'll fall right down to 30 again, but at the very least, a move to 50 on the RSI might make sense and could probably correlate to at least the uh, you know, lower 2900s. So that's where I believe we'll be heading in the future. Um, if you take a look at the stock market today and what happened to it, a lot of the uh, tech companies are actually taking a little bit of a break today. And you know, for Zoom, for Netflix, you can kind of say like, okay, this makes sense because if the pandemic is going to be over, they might see less business. Makes sense. Moderna's down a little bit, which... To, to be honest, it's half surprising, half not. I always imagine it to be like, you know, as the race for a vaccine continues, we're going to eventually see competition. And what that means is if one company becomes closer, the other companies will, will relatively weaken. And as a result, their stock price might come down a little bit. I believe Novavax said that they're uh, seeing very good results today and they're up a little bit on the news. Not nearly as much as what I was expecting, but they're still up. On the strong side of the economy, it's very clear as to why we're moving higher today. The uh, airlines, the cruise lines, and the banks are moving very much higher. I think Jamie Dimon today said that the banks are in a very strong position. Said JP Morgan had enough reserves and they were not looking to cut their dividend by any means anytime in the foreseeable future. And as a result, people bought the crap out of banks. And with the vaccine coming through um, faster than expected, we see at the weaker side of the economy um, really likes that news. They want business soon. They're dying to have customers again. And so uh, they rallied quite nicely today. They're the only reason why um, the S&P is up around 2% and the NASDAQ is about flat today. That's basically where we are for stocks. Um, as for the bond yields, uh, we have rallied a little bit today. And, uh, people might have a little more faith in uh, you know the credit rating of the government. And you know if we take a look back at stocks, I guess uh, stocks are sort of being pumped up. Taking a look at gold, we actually fell quite well today, quite spectacularly. Uh, we hit seven-year highs just last week, and yet now we look to be testing uh, the 17 low 1700s again. I think we still will go higher. I think gold is, again, with zero interest rates, um, doesn't seem to be a very profitable investment. Bond yields are still low. I think people are moving money out of golds and into stocks as the vac search for a vaccine becomes closer and closer to reality. And as a result, we see what happened today. Stocks are up 2%, and this is very surprising. If you were a bull, I'm not sure how you saw it through, but um, congratulations. There certainly were a lot of people, in my opinion, that had a you know a selling limit at around 3000 So the fact that we sort of scalped up through it is uh, very big news, in my opinion. And uh, we could move higher, but again, not without a pullback, in my opinion. I'd say we go at least down to 2900 before we move a leg higher. We'll take a look at volatility today, which actually doesn't seem to be as affected as I expected. Volatility is only down 1% today somehow. We were in the same level now as we were when the stock market was actually in the 2900s, which suggests that there might still be inherent risk in the stock market, and we could see this thing move higher in the future, which means the stock market still does have potential to fall. But again, to me, it's a lot more limited when the Federal Reserve is doing everything it can to prop markets up. If you're buying the crap out of junk bonds, they're, they lowered the interest rate to zero, which honestly now looks to be a little too much. Um, and as a result, all this might actually play a bigger role on the economy than the um, actual coronavirus itself, as crazy as it seems. I had somebody comment on my last video that 
that he expects the S&P 500 to actually move to all-time highs, perhaps by the end of this year. Sounds ridiculous, but you know he pointed out the Nasdaq um, is very much nearing all-time highs already, which you know it's quite fascinating. You could have expected it from just a few months ago, right? But no, we see a V-shaped recovery, and as much as I hate it, reality is reality, and we have to inevitably accept it. And so moving forward, I'd expect a short-term pullback, but still, fundamentally, um, you know, by what the Federal Reserve is doing, we could still move higher. So with all that being said, thank you very much for watching episode 7 of me talking about the um, S&P 500 index. I hope you uh, may stay tuned for more. I plan to uh, release videos at least twice a week, once every Friday, and whenever there um, seems to be something big affecting the uh, stock markets. So with all that being said, thank you very much for listening to my analysis on the S&P 500 index, and I wish you best of luck in your trading. Take care.